Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today I felt like rocking out, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn how to play Duality by Slipknot. It absolutely rocks. This song is so much fun to play. So I hope you guys enjoy the little journey we're gonna go through it, learning all the riffs, and um, there's some really killer stuff in this song. But before we do it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell so you don't release a new video, of course. Um, like and comment on the videos. It helps you actually be told by YouTube that I'm, I released a new one. Um, subscribing alone won't do it. Um, and if you really uh, want to support what I do here on YouTube or any, anywhere on the web, the best way to do it is to just join my Guitar Academy. Um, you'll see a link to it in the description below. And my Guitar Academy cover is, contains all of my guitar courses covering many different topics, many different courses in there. Uh, from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. Uh, you also get personalized support from me as well. So um, hopefully you'll go check it out and you'll get a free seven-day trial just by clicking that link below. All right, let's jump into the song. So the big, uh, the only bummer of this song is it's in drop B tuning, um, which this guitar, I highly recommend not doing that with a set of nines. <laughs> which I have right now. So it's it's literally like playing rubber bands. Um, and the tuning is, is tough, but uh, it didn't feel like completely restringing just for uh, this um, one thing. So um, we're gonna we're gonna just work with it. But so the tuning is uh, you're basically tuning the entire guitar down a minor third. Um, and then you're gonna take the low E string and or at that, at that point, it wouldn't be a C sharp, it'd be tuned down a minor third. And then tune that down to like, so it's a drop tuning um, down another whole step. So it's basically like drop D down um, three half steps. What are those notes? B, a low B. Then um, an F sharp. Then a B. Then an E. Then a G sharp, and the top string is a C sharp. All right, so um, once you get into that tuning, hopefully you have a guitar that kind of will work with it. Um, we're gonna start with this little intro, which is a different way of playing the riff than they play the rest of the song. It's kind of a, it's like a variation of the chorus riff, and they kind of have it a more subdued tone on it. Very, the, very, the very beginning of the track. Mm. The, all the thick guitars come in. So what's going on here? So we're st starting, by the way, I'm gonna call this the E string, the A string, D string, G string throughout the lesson. Um, even though I know it's completely retuned, we're just gonna kind of name them like we're used to seeing, uh, calling them out so it's not too confusing. So I'm just kind of uh, going on the low E. Kind of an eighth note thing. And then, Zero, one, two, three. And then start doing that eighth note rhythm on the three. Then move up to the sixth fret. And kind of pick that slide down. And then you play the one a little bit. Then three, one, zero. So we have this. Kind of start repeating from there. And it kind of, just the, the second time it gets down to that, I know it's not an F, but that F, <laughs> we're gonna call it an F. It kind of holds that a little bit, and then we have the full band kind of kick in. And they play the riff different. And that's how they play it during the chorus sections for the rest of the song. So that's just a little bit more simplified. Just that open E. Three. Six. And when you get that six, you're kind of sliding off of it. And 
then back down to that one, and three, one, zero. So that's kind of a simplified version. All right, then the band starts really kind of um, kicking into it here. We have this section. So um, we're going to start here with this, just we're hitting a low E string and the A string together. So it's just that little So just kind of that simple rhythm. I'm sure you can just hear it and, and know it if you know the song well. It's like one, two, three, dun, 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 dun. Kind of thing. So after you get there, just kind of chugging on those two open strings, we have this. So that's going to be heavily palm muted. The two low um, open A and E, then the first fret on both of those strings, and then back down. And then you're going to scratch, grab the third fret on the low E string, and then you're going to hit a pinch harmonic on the third fret there on the A string and bend it up, so like this. And we kind of start doing the same thing again. And then there, it's just a different ending instead of going, we have this. Which is just, uh, instead of going, we go up here and play the power chord, the sixth fret of the uh, low E and the A. And as you slide that down, when you get down to the third fret on the low E, you're gonna pinch harmonic on that. And just with a heavy bob rod. Have fun with it. So with it. Then repeat all that. All right, and then there's a little, they basically plays the verse riff to transition to the verse. So this kind of little. So this is a, the, the thing he goes into right out of that riff, right before the, uh, the verse vocals come in. It's just the verse riff. So now this thing is tricky to play. It moves all over the place really quick. So it's just straight. Gotta get that uh, alternate picking going. So we have this. So let's get the notes down first. So 12th fret. The only note that happens on the the A string is that at the 12th fret. So. So at that 12, then you go down to seven on the low E. Then ten, then five, seven. So, and then uh, down to three, five, then one, zero. So those are just the notes first. All right. So now, um, when we're, we're um, picking it, now you're gonna really wanna be palm muting these. It helps tighten up those strings to make the alternate picking easier to kind of control, um, which is hard to do when you have these big flappy strings that I got going on right now. So anyway, so. So we're playing this one, two, three, four on the that 12th fret on the A. Then twice on the seven there. Then uh, four times on the ten. 
four times on the A, then twice on the seventh fret. Then one, two, three, four on the three there. And then twice on the eight on the fifth fret there. Then four times on the one. And then just kind of fill up the remainder of the, the measure with the uh, the open E. So we have this. Jim Root's part there, and I think I think Mick Thompson plays along with him for the first four times through during the verse, and and then Mick Thompson goes up here and plays a higher part while Jim Root continues doing this. So continue doing that, but over on top of that we have Mick Thompson doing this. So that's uh, kind of the second half of the verse. Um, you'll see, you hear that line come in. So what are those notes? We're on the mostly the D string here. So we have the seventh fret on the D. So we have seven on the D, then two, three on the D. Then the one note that's not on the D string is over here. On the, it goes down a tritone there for the fourth fret. On the, I'm sorry, second fret on the um, A string. And then we go back to the D string. Two, three, five, three, two. So, kind of the easiest way to get these things down is instead of trying to count how many times you're playing each one, it's a straight, kind of tremolo picked thing. Um, but just the timing of the, the melody, basically. So just time those notes the same, but just trim a pick them. So that's the same. Just kind of whirling like that. And then just add, take that same kind of timing of the melody. And that's kind of the easier way to do this, instead of counting how many times you hit each note. It's just better just to kind of feel it as a melody. Um, all right, so, um, so that's what's going on uh, during the verse. And then we have this little pre chorus riff, which happens real quick. Then it goes to the chorus, which is absolutely just rocks. So what we're playing here is we're playing this these, this power chord off the third fret of the the bottom three strings. There's a quick little kind of up of the fourth fret power chord in front of it. So one, two. Get that rhythm. It's got, it's got some kind of upbeats in there. And then, so after you've done that, then it goes the the second fret power chord that uh, crosses those three strings uh, twice, and then the first fret power chord twice. So. All right, then we get to the first chorus. The first chorus is a little bit different. Um, um, it's a little bit shorter, and it has that little verse riff at the end of it, too. So we have this little thing. Over here.
So it's kind of like a little variation of it. So we had that riff, basically. We did this in the intro. That's the main chorus riff. Kind of do that a couple times. And then we jump up here and do that little uh, verse riff, the Jim Roots part. And then the second time through that riff. So we basically stop and just do this power chords at the very end. So after that seven, those sevens there. And then you have uh, uh, Nick Thompson comes in and it. He does that. He, he's letting uh, just kind of Jim Root do this part. So when Jim Root hits that, you hear Mick Thompson come in and kind of match him there. So after we get that seven, play through the riff once, and then when we get that seven, right here, we just jump back to the power chord at the third fret, then fifth. One, and then the open. All right, so from there, we get back to the same verse riffs again, except it's just kind of half as, as long. So we start with it. And all, so just a couple times through, then you hear the, the harmony uh, from Mick Thompson playing. All right, and then the same pre-chorus. All right, now we get to the second chorus. And the second chorus is longer. It also has some octaves in it. Now, um, I will say there's a, a tutorial that Jim Root actually is, is kind of showing you, um, well, he's kind of demonstrating the parts of the song that he did a, a few years ago. Uh, you can find that on YouTube too. Um, you'll see a lot during the chorus sections he's adding a lot of octaves um, to it. I believe a lot of that stuff is stuff he's just kind of started doing live over the time. There is an, uh, an octave section that's uh, very apparent um, that starts in chorus two, kind of the second half of chorus two, so we're gonna cover that. Um, but you know, you can also listen to the isolated tracks on, um, on YouTube as well if you look for the isolated tracks. So you can kind of really pick up what's going on. Don't hear a lot of the the other some of it some of the times he says on the YouTube video I, I kind of do this live now you know so he just kind of adds things as he's played it over the years I'm sure but so I'm just gonna do really the octave part that you really hear on the recording which happens in this second chorus so it looks like this. <laughs> So that chorus absolutely rocks. So the same riff, a couple times. Now Mick Thompson will continue playing that as Jim Root goes up and does this. You can keep the low string ring in there as well. But let's look at the octaves first. We have the, the 12th fret on the A and the 14th on the G. Just make sure all the other strings are muted. Then move that to the 5th fret. Then up to 8. Then up to 10. Slide up to 12. And then play. Slide to 13 and back up to the 12. So just get that muddy. So now, keep that low string ringing underneath it.
All right, so, um, so that's kind of the chorus number two there. And then we get to what I consider just like the bridge section. There's a little key change in there as well. So um, let me play through this uh, for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it. There we go. All right, so it's that same riff that we did earlier, um, uh, just kind of a little jam riff we did earlier. So right there, so we basically repeated that riff twice. And at the end of the second time, instead of going like that, we're just we're gonna play the power chord at the sixth fret three times, heavily palmated. And then at the third fret as well, heavily palmated three times. All right, so it's just basically a different ending. And that takes us to but it was the same rhythm, just gonna move it up a half step. So, so basically, just kind of take the same rhythm, but you're gonna be playing at the first fret instead of the open strings. So see if you can catch that. Like with it, we have um, kind of so. And everything else is the same. We're, 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 We have this kind of the same rhythm, and then we go one, three, one. And then back to the three, that same little ending. Three on the low E, with that bend there with the pinch harmonic on the fifth string, with us. And repeat. And then here we have a different ending instead of doing we go which is just that slide from the sixth fret power chord to the open power chord. Repeat that. All right, now from there, we get to the uh, uh, the pre-course again, but this one has a little extended ending that takes us into the final um, the final chorus. Looks like this, um, uh, here we go. So it just flies around pretty quickly. So we're the same riff. So it's the same thing we did before, but there's this little thing, that, a riff thrown in there. All right, so let's just get those notes down. Once again, it's a good thing just to have the melody going. And then just, as soon as you get the timing of the melody notes, trim a little picket, so. So, zero, three, two, five, three, seven. So it's kind of the first half of it. And we're not we're not trimble picking yet. We're just trying to get the melody down. Then jump up to the twelfth fret. 
it back down to seven. Ten. Nine. And then you're gonna end it going five, seven. As soon as you get that seven, you kill it. So it's and this tremolo picked up. And then it just kind of big build up to that force. Uh, and then we he does the octaves here. Jim Root will come in. All right, so we do have that going on there. Um, and then we have this um, kind of whole, I just consider this because whole ending section This goes into a halftime thing and stuff. Um, so it's pretty similar to stuff we've done before though. So it looks like this. So we have a little bit, uh, the, the rhythm there to that part, we've, we've played something similar to that earlier in the song, but the rhythm is a little bit different now. So we have this. And instead of a kind of two hits, it's four hits there in that middle part. So we have this. So that, those, 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 remember it was kind of three, two, and three? Now it's three, four, and three. So there's a little quad thrown in there. So we have this, uh, so it starts the same though. Except with that rhythm change, obviously. Now here, the first, this ending here is that same little, the the uh, power chord six uh, at the sixth fret there three times, then the third fret three times, and then the first fret power chord slower there. Um, three times as well. So we have this. So. And then we get to the halftime section, which is really kind of the same way we just played the riff. Uh, a little bit kind of sludgier. I don't, I don't know how to put it. You're kind of letting the notes not. You're letting the notes kind of that last one. You're still slightly palming it. It's kind of like you're letting the notes ring a little bit. So it's basically just a lighter palm mute. So you don't have this such a tight. Which I'm also muting down here for that. But when you get to this halftime section, it's kind of more like. So you got to really be able to control that palm mute. So it's still there. It's still muffled. But you're letting the notes ring a little bit, kind of that resonance come out. And then this one has that 6-3 uh, kind of, again, there, uh, except we don't go to the ones now, we just go, and then we just go back to the riff as we kind of played at the beginning of the song. Meaning, with that little pinch harmonic on the sixth string, we're still keeping that same quad rhythm throughout the rest of the song. So that whole outro section looks like this.
that is about it for Duality. It is a very, very fun track to play. If you can get your guitar in this tuning, it's better if you have a kind of extended range guitar. Um, but I'm playing this in drop B, which is what they're doing, and um, just with a standard standard uh, scale length guitar and nine gay strings, it's a hard to get, get control the strings too much. So hopefully you get a little bit thicker strings you can use. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again again. I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.